It's been a year, so you know what time it is. Can't touch this. No, it's not hammer time. The yearly cycle of the MSI QB NARC has come around, and we're checking out one of the new additions, the AI One UMG. I know, I know, you're almost as excited about AI as I am, but try not to jump out of your seat and accidentally headbutt your monitor every time I mention it. <laughs> MSI's QB NARC is back, and the One UMG is smaller than last year's model, but still looks similar with a very solid plastic exterior and a metal plate underneath. It's just a black box, and that's all I want out of a mini PC. But I'm boring like that. MSI's One UMG features Intel's Core Ultra 7 155H, which is a big departure from the U series we saw in previous models. That means more performance, along with more power draw and heat to deal with. So a new cooling solution debuts here. Intel's 155H CPU is the first generation to include Arc integrated graphics and an MPU for that AI you're all excited about. I mean, we're all excited about. Pretend to be excited. Yeah! Even though the MSI QB NUC is available for consumers, it's been made very clear to me that its target market is the business sector for offices, digital signage, education, medical, science, and whatnot. I definitely looked out of place filming at Computex with businessmen in suits eyeballing me to hurry up while waiting to check out the new minis on display. Yeah, you wish you'd been brought up on Alex Kid Games, buddy. Damn it! I hate this game! Unlike the Gearbyte Bricks, which has gone exclusively B2B, MSI still offers this knuck type mini PC to consumers as does Asus and ASRock from the long-established computing brands. Well, ASRock is MIA down under, but that's beside the point. If you want BIOS updates, and in many cases, the local warranty, which in Australia is three years, then this MSI Mini is one of the options available. Included in the box is a 19.5 volt, 120 watt power supply. Not the most compact one we've seen, but not ginormous either. Also included is a manual, screws, visa mount and optional external power button. I couldn't find this one UMG on Amazon.com, but on Newegg it's around 696 US dollars for the bare bones, which means you'll need to add RAM, an SSD and OS yourself. Some computer stores may have pre-builds available. Also that Newegg spec is incorrect. The AI One UMG supports DDR5 memory up to 5600 mega transfers. I did mention the external power button earlier. It plugs into the side of the Mini and is useful if you stash it behind a monitor, booth, or rack. Another option is to use the MSI Powerlink feature, which we'll go over shortly. The front of the AI One UMG has two USB 3 10 gigabit ports, along with a USB-C. Inside is an Intel Wi-Fi 6E AX211 for wireless and Bluetooth. The rear has dual Thunderbolt 4 ports, neither of which supports USB-C PD to power the Mini without the power supply. There's also dual 2.5 gigabit LAN and dual HDMI 2.1. The left HDMI port supports MSI Powerlink. This feature allows you to turn the QB NUC on and off simply by pressing the power button on a compatible MSI monitor. I tested this last year and it's basically HDMI CEC support as I was able to make the function work with my TV and remote as well. It's straightforward to open the QB with just four screws to loosen and then lift up the metal plate. A thin slice of copper is underneath which connects to the SSDs via thermal pads and acts as a heatsink. The main storage slot is a 2280 M.2 Gen 4X4 and for secondary storage an M.2 2242 SATA. Underneath the OS drive is the M.2 wireless card. I'm not sure who put this pre-build together, but if you're adding parts to a barebones mini PC, you should always use two sticks of RAM, as just one reduces both CPU and GPU performance. Since MSI sells the QB as a barebones, I'm going to add two sticks for this review, as that's the configuration I would have made if I bought it. Also, there are additional power modes to test, so it wasn't feasible to benchmark all the different configurations. Once you put your QB together, you'll need to choose an OS. This pre-build comes with Windows 11 Pro, 
but the drivers and BIOS updates are found on the official website along with the MSI software, which has features such as hardware monitoring, the ability to increase the performance mode from Windows, recovery drive, and monitoring power consumption. I use the user scenario function to test the balanced and extreme performance modes in this review. While MSI recommends Windows 11 for the QB NARC 1 UMG, Ubuntu did work fine when I booted it off a USB. Okay then, let's see how this mini holds up against other Core Ultra 7s and also against last year's QB NARC 1M. Single core Cinebench sees a regression in performance for the new Intel Media Lake chip and last year's Raptor Lake Mini was slightly faster at 5%. Increasing the performance mode resulted in a consistently better score. Last year's unit is only 3% ahead after the tweak. The other two Core Ultra 7 155H Minis tested had similar results. The multi-core out-of-the-box performance is lower than the other Minis due to the 43 watt power limit set by MSI. It's still a massive 47% increase in score over the last year's unit. After switching to performance mode, the new QB NUC had a further 23% improvement over its out-of-box score and put it around AMD Ryzen 6800H territory. The best performing Core Ultra 7 hit almost 16,000 points, which is another 24% above the QB NUC's best score. Geekbench has a variety of single core tests and shows a similar pattern to Cinebench. Last year's unit was clearly faster in single core. On the multi-core side, there's a tightening in margins between the Core Ultra 7 minis once the QB NUC has the performance mode enabled. Either way, it beats last year's unit, no problem. One benchmark which shows a large improvement over last year's model is H.264 video encoding. The video file took over 200 seconds to be completed previously. Now, it only took 135 or 112 seconds after the tweak. Again, the other two minis did slightly better. There's another big improvement in the longer AV1 encoding test. Although the B-Link Mini PC, which runs on a higher power limit, unsurprisingly finishes faster. Next, we're testing Intel's QuickSync video encoding function on the integrated graphics, which drastically speeds up encoding of the same file. Nothing's changed here. The QB NUC is behind the other two Core Ultra 7 Minis. Last year's unit didn't support AV1 quick sync encoding, so it's not on this chart. Now for everyone's favorite benchmark, AI. Yeah! We have similar performance between the two Core Ultra 7 Minis and the Geekbench AI CPU test with the ONNX framework. Increasing the performance mode didn't show a difference that couldn't be attributed to margin of error. Now testing that framework on the GPU, and we're looking at a mid-range performer. Okay, on to the 3 d Mark graphics benchmarks. Firestrike reported a matching result with one of the two other minis. However, the B-Link did much better with a 34% higher score. Compared to last year's QB model though, the latest is a big improvement, 31.5%. On TypeSwy, it beats last year's model by a giganormous 83.5%. And again, the best Ultra 7 result comes in higher. And in Steel Nomad Lite, it's 82% higher than last year's unit. Comparing the MSI QB 1 UMG against all the mini PCs on this list, it's now around the mid range, which is a shift from the low end previously with a U series processor. The extra performance will be useful if you plan to use it for something like the Adobe Suite. Photoshop relies on the CPU, and the QB NUC gets a mid-range score going by the few results so far. Intel's video decoding on chip is unmatched, but the Puget Bench result takes in multiple factors with Adobe Premiere, including export time. Again, the QB lands in the middle, but with the performance mode enabled, it has a substantially better score. The audio latency test using LatencyMon with Cinebench running in the background didn't quite pass. The software reported higher latency than it should be. Not ideal for audio work. Time for a quick detour into gaming on the QB NUC at the office. Uh, I mean at home. Esports games work fine at 1080p low.
Triple A games, not so much. The Thunderbolt 4 port allows you to add an eGPU for much more graphics performance when the boss isn't around, or for other 40 gigabit USB devices like MSI's Datamag portable storage, which now supports the faster transfer speeds. The storage benchmark won't mean much unless you put it together with the same SSD, but here's what I got anyway. With a score of almost 3000, this WD drive performs really well. Temps for the SSD were kept well under control with the available cooling solution. Bluetooth range maxed out at 5 meters or 16 feet, which is around average and similar to last year's model. Wireless range was also fine at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band with no dropouts or latency issues when I played a full game of Valorant. An idle power draw of 14 is on the high end and up over the previous QB NUC. Maximum power draw has also increased from 57 watts last year to over 70 watts, which is still far below other Intel Media Lake CPU minis we've looked at. Both modes tested stick within the 43 watt power limit. Maximum CPU temp held around the 90C mark, which makes this one of the best results for an Intel Media Lake mini PC along with the B-Link and is also in line with last year's unit. So I got to see the ping pong display in Thailand, I mean Taiwan, showing the new Froza fans promising better results, and I have to say they made a noticeable difference, especially considering the higher power draw. Fan noise under load has not changed over last year, and the performance mode adds another 2 dBA to 38. Still making this mini PC better than average in fan noise, and one of the quieter minis we've looked at. The pitch of the fan is also less whiny than most, which makes a big difference. My only problem with a 1UMG is that idle fan noise is set too high out of the box. It never dropped below 33 dBA during my testing, which is above most competitors. Luckily, you can change the fan curve in the BIOS, which I'll show you how to do shortly. MSI lists the 1UMG QB NUC at 0.51 liters in volume, and that's exactly my result after measuring it, which makes it one of the smallest mini PCs in the chart and more compact than last year's model. Like with most minis, you can get into the BIOS by mashing the delete key on startup. Whoa, we've got a different user interface. Anyway, this one allows you to use a mouse. Let's start by fixing that high idle fan noise by going into hardware monitor. And you'll see the default fan speed is set to 43% at up to 55C. My preference is to raise the temperature to say 65C and lower the fan speed to something like 25%, which makes my ears very happy. Oh yeah, that's quiet. On the left bar in advanced, you can find the AC power loss and wake up event settings. In boot, you can speed up the boot time with MSI's fast boot. And that's the MSI QBNUC AI 1UMG. Another big change for MSI in the mini PC space. Overall performance has increased a lot over the previous unit due to the switch to an H-series CPU, and yet load fan noise and temps have stayed the same. The unique features such as the external power button and MSI power link help it stand out from what's become a very crowded market with all the Chinese mini PC releases. And there's proper support with drivers, BIOS updates, and a local 3-year warranty in Australia which indicates a certain level of component and build quality. From time to time I get asked about reliability. My answer is always the same. Look at the established brands. That being said, my biggest gripe with the QB NUC 1 UMG is its default idle fan noise, which thankfully can be fixed in the BIOS. My recommendation would be that they lower it in a future BIOS update. 
be aware you're not getting the full performance of the Core Ultra 7 1555H as it's running at a lower power limit, but the trade-off is better temps and lower noise. Unfortunately, there's no USB-C PD for power and display with one USB-C cable. I'd like to see this feature added in the future. Finally, minis with Intel CPUs don't present great value at the moment. They've only got the upper hand on the content creation side of things over their AMD equivalents. Those planning to upgrade their Cubinuck, whether it's at home or office, will see a big upgrade, even against last year's Cubinuck 1M. It's the best Cubinuck mini PC MSI has released, and it is competent across the board. So yeah, I'm happy with the direction of the Cubi, and look forward to checking out the other models. Oh, and if you were wondering about the MSI Datamag portable storage I mentioned earlier, I have a review of the 20 gigabit version right here. The new model will support 40 gigabit and will pair nicely with a Thunderbolt 4 port on the mini PC as an extra storage device. Cheers.